While Chicago has certainly bounced back from the coronavirus pandemic in terms of vaccination, with upwards of 52.97% of the county fully vaccinated, according to the Illinois Department of Health, one major deficit to the Chicagoland metropolitan area is its unemployment. According to WalletHub and the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the second city's unemployment recovery is among the worst of the 180 largest U.S. cities, ranking 172nd with an unemployment rate of 8.5% as of June 2021. We interviewed Natalie Moore of WBEZ, author of The South Side, A Portrait of Chicago and American Segregation, to get her thoughts and insight into the precedent of Chicago's economic response to unemployment in the wake of COVID-19. Hello, my name is Natalie Moore, and I'm a reporter at WBEZ, and I'm also the author of The South Side, A Portrait of Chicago and American Segregation. When asked how she first responded to the pandemic, she describes it like this. And it, it's, it was kind of like this, this train that just kept going faster and faster and coming. Um, and then I remember there were questions about, oh, should I, you know, should this trip cancel? No, it's going to be fine. It's going to pass. And then it was like, everybody go home. Oh, we're going to be fine in a couple of months. Oh, we're going to be fine by summer. And, you know, that same month, I think it was, it was pretty clear that this was not going to go away. While a lot of people felt the same way, Ms. Moore had also described the impact COVID had on specifically brown and black communities living in Chicago. Were there um, any obvious ind indicators regarding the possible extent of the pandemic and or economic recession? I would say early on, no. Um, and then as it moved on, it was clear that it was going to likely hit black and brown communities harder because everything hits those communities harder. So we were bracing ourselves for that. But again, in April, like it, it just, I don't think mo most people understood what we were going to be in store for. This was a bit saddening to hear, but unfortunately, it only got worse from there. WBEZ collected data of COVID rates, which Ms. Moore goes into detail about. Uh, essential workers tend to be black and brown, so they don't get to stay home. And it exposes them more to COVID. We did a big project on zip code. So the zip codes with the highest number of deaths and COVID cases were in Black and Latino areas, and the lowest were in white wealthy areas. So there's there's that factor, like who gets the better health care? Safety net hospitals tend to be in Black and brown communities, and they don't have the capacity that Research One hospitals have. Um, so the pandemic really exposed for people who weren't paying attention all the inequities that we have in our society, whether it's housing or healthcare. We then asked Ms. Moore what she noticed from Chicago's response to COVID. In Chicago, uh, you know, in the beginning, the mayor had a lot of means to keep people at home, which did add some levity to a dire situation. Um, and then there are some critiques that they didn't address race sooner. They did, but should they have done that earlier? Um, so you know, I think in general, Illinois is seen to have been better than some other states. To get a better sense of the financial impact of COVID upon student employees and their families, especially in relation to increasing unemployment throughout Chicago, we interviewed three leading members of the Chicago Economic Awareness Council. I'm Tracy Frizzell. I'm the director of the Economic Awareness Council, which is a partner for One Summer Chicago. Hi, I am Toria Baker, program manager um, for Economic Awareness Council as well, um, servicing the uh, young adults and youth uh, through financial literacy education. Hi, I am Yvonne Guzman. I work with the Economic Awareness Council as a financial educator and intern supervisor. Um, and during One Summer Chicago, I am team lead, so I am in charge of a group of four young adults. The Economic Awareness Council is a nonprofit which focuses on preparing students and families for the financial decisions of today and tomorrow. 
when talking about the extent of the pandemic and the effects upon their work and young adults' ability to continue with the program, they said this. But um, being in front of working with all the youth and looking at the different impacts, um, they had a real life experience that was happening in front of them. Some were impacted tremendously, some were impacted just a little, but it was a lot of different variations that were happening within the homes. On the topic of youth employment and savings, one of the most enlightening parts of our conversation with the Economic Awareness Council came from their insight into employed young adults' priorities when asked of their noticings during the program. So one of the things that I did notice, um, more specifically when we cover the savings topics presentations, is that um, many youth um, tend to reflect back at what was happening during the pandemic, how they um, saw some of their family members struggle financially. Um, so that is something they do want to avoid. Um, and they did realize um, that savings um, is not necessarily just for future goals, such as vacationing um, or for um, to buy something that you really want. Um, savings can actually help you when it comes to emergencies. Ultimately, in talking with Natalie Moore and the leading members of the Economic Awareness Council, the means of mitigating the effects of a pandemic and subsequent economic recession within the Chicagoland metropolitan area became clear. Equitable access to financial resources and education, especially for those undergoing unemployment or joblessness, is imperative to solving the crisis. Um, we believe, uh, and the city and Winchester for Chicago um, very much believes that this connection between the young adults and the financial institutions and appropriate financial education can be very powerful. And that is really what we found. The rates of saving actually um, even went up last year as it was top of everybody's mind that to be able to address future crises like this, you need to have savings and that can really help families um, to be more um, stable and to have the resources that they need. Hopefully, as we transition into a post-COVID-19 pandemic world, the city of Chicago and surrounding metropolitan area will take note of the dire need for an expansion of both equitable and educational employment opportunities for those currently without it.